Hello, today um, we're looking at a rate of reaction experiment and we're going to find out some calculations after we've done this experiment. So this is the data I've found. I've done a rate of reaction experiment changing agitation. So that was my independent variable. These are the masses I recorded. You can see the mass went down. And so I'm going to fill out this summary table down here. So if you're doing this at home, I suggest first creating this summary table. We're going to look at trial 1 and calculate the rate of reaction for 100 RPM. So if I look at this table, here's trial 1. I'm going to graph this data versus the time. So let's select the data, go to insert, scatter plot, and create a scatter plot. And you can see the mass going down over time. Now looking at this graph, we want to find the time when the gradient or the slope is the steepest. So looking at my graph, this is approximately this time here, which if we have a look is in the first 300 seconds. And then it kind of peters out a little bit. So I'm going to change the data again and just go from 0 to 300 seconds. Selecting that time, that change in mass, creating another scatter plot. All right, now we want to create a trend line. So you right click on one of the dots and click add trend line. We're just going to go linear. So that one there, and we're going to display the equation. So this has given us an equation. Y is the change in mass equal to that number times by the time, which is x, plus a constant. That's the starting mass. It's a constant. We don't need that. All we need is that number there, which is called the gradient, which is 0 0.0007. So we type that down, 0 0.0007. And that is the rate of reaction. That is uh, the grams lost per second. So now we have to do that again for the second trial. And pretty much this process, you just have to do over and over again for all of your trials. So I have um, three trials for each RPM, so I'm gonna to have to do it nine times. So I'm gonna show you one more time and then um, I will just fill in the data in my own time. So one more time, this is for trial two. So we select, this one's a bit different because the columns aren't next to each other. So we select the time, select the time, and we're only going to 300 seconds, if you remember. Do control or hold down control button, and then while you're holding control, select the mass for trial two. We go insert again, scatter plot, and looks like there was a bit of variation here, but that's okay. Again, right click the dots, add trend line, and go down and display equation. And that's the rate of reaction for the second trial. So delete that graph and write down that rate of reaction. Now it's negative because the mass is going down, but you don't have to put a negative sign in there. You can, it's up to you. So now I'm going to go through and do the rest. Um, so I thought I'd show you this. Sometimes you might have made an error. So if I select my data, go insert scatter plot, something's gone wrong. So it's not got all six dots. So let's go back to my data. Aha. So you might be able to see there's a space there. So I have to delete that space and try again. Select all my data insert, and now it's worked again. So just be careful, sometimes you might have made an error, 
typing in your data. All right, now that I've done my three graphs, I've found my rates of reactions for each of my trials um, for 100 RPM, 200 RPM, and 300 RPM. Um, so I think key to this, you don't have to always do the same time for each trial. I think it's good to go up to the same time. So the first two examples I went up to 300 seconds to find the rate of reaction. When I got to 300 RPM, the steepest curve was in uh, up to 180 seconds. So I, this is the gradient for that data. And I kept that consistent for all of the trials for 300 RPM. So I'll just repeat it again. The first 200 RPM, 200 RPM, I went up to 300 seconds. But when I got to this RPM, 300 RPM, I only went up to 180 because that was the steepest part of the curve. And so I did 180 for all three trials to get the rate of reaction. So the next step after you've found the rate of reaction for every single trial is to find the average rate of reaction. So to find the average, you add the three cells, cell 1 plus cell 2 plus cell 3, put brackets around that, and divide it by the number of trials. I did three trials, so I'm dividing three rates of reaction added together by three. And that's the average rate of reaction for 100 RPM. The good thing about Excel is you can, instead of typing all that out again, you can just go Control C and it's highlighted that cell. And then you can go Control V and that's calculated the average for those three cells. So do that again, Control C, hold down Control and C, and then let go and then hold down Control V. And that's found the average rate of reaction for 300 RPM. All right, so that's the first four columns of my summary table for rate of reaction filled out using Excel. Now I've got this thing called the range. So these are the three formulas. I'm gonna start with the range. So I need to do the fastest rate for each independent variable minus the slowest rate for each independent for each independent variable. So this one here, the fastest was this one minus that one. And that is the range for the rate of reaction. Um, for 200 RPM, this one minus um, this one. And then this one, uh, this was the fastest, minus this one. So now that we found the range, you can see the first um, 200 RPM, 200 RPM has quite a small range, and then 300 RPM has quite a large range. Um, so now let's calculate the absolute uncertainty. So this is just the range divided by 2. So you go this cell slash 2. And that's just doing that number divided by 2. Do the same thing divided by 2. That cell divided by 2. Another way to do this, go to that cell, hover over that little dot there and drag down and it will copy that formula to all your other cells. Obviously these are zero because I haven't done any calculations. Last one is percentage of uncertainty about the mean, which is the absolute uncertainty, which we just calculated, divided by the mean rate of reaction. So we go equals absolute uncertainty all right, and we also have to times by 100 to get percent. So this is the time symbol, 100, and that's the divide symbol, 
by the average there. And that's your percentage of uncertainty. Another way to do that, so I'll do the next one. So equals absolute uncertainty divided by the average rate of reaction. And then it's given us a decimal because I didn't multiply by 100. So you can go up to this symbol here instead of multiplying by 100. And it's converted it to a percent. If I wanted to do it for this one, I'd have to delete that times by 100. And then go back and click on the percent button here. Um, so then, again, you can do the drag. So hover over and drag it down. You can see this one has quite a big percentage of uncertainty about the mean. So this is possibly incorrect due to human error, um, systematic error. Possibly I need to go back and instead of going to um, 180 seconds, maybe go further. Um, so there's different ways to explain that percent, percentage uncertainty. So I hope that helped you with finding those calculations involved in rate of reaction.